Okay, so we're back and kind of ran out of time on my last video. So we're going to take the answer we got right here and also this answer right here. These were the distance equations for the length of the line PQ and the length of the line CD. We know that these two lines are the same. So we're going to take those two equations and set them equal to each other. Let's see if I have enough room. I'm going to have to get back to my small pen. All right, so we can say that the square root of 2 minus 2 cosine alpha cosine beta minus 2 sine alpha sine beta square root of all of that is equal to the square root of 1 minus 2 cosine alpha minus beta. Now we can square both sides. That will get rid of our square root. And then we have, uh, oh wait, I think that cosine squared. Okay, so back here I forgot a plus one also. So this plus one we need to bring down here also. Okay, no. plus one, which will then give us a two. Okay, so what we have over here then is a two. Okay, now we're good to go. Uh, so square both sides, what we get is two minus two cosine alpha cosine beta minus two sine alpha sine beta equals 2 minus 2 cosine alpha minus beta. All right, so what I can do now is I can divide everything by um, a 2. I can subtract these two. Let's subtract these 2's from both sides first. Now I can divide everything by a negative 2. That would be better. And I end up with cosine alpha cosine beta my plus sine alpha sine beta equals cosine of alpha minus beta. And that is the proof to the difference identity for cosine. Uh, so all of that, we can do all the same exact things for all of those angles, and we could come up with all of those identities, but I'm not going to prove any more than just that one. So let's go ahead and move on to our examples now. Scrolling down. Our first example that we're going to look at, example number one, find the exact value of cosine of 75 degrees. Now if you looked at your unit circle, 75 degrees would not be on there anywhere. So we want to rewrite 75. So we can say cosine of 75 degrees equals what? So let's just look at our unit circle, figure out if we can make 75 out of a couple of, a couple different ways to make 75. So look at your unit circle. If we're looking at our unit circle. Well, what's right beside 75 degrees? Well, we could do 90, okay? What would I have to do for 90? It would be 90 minus 15 would equal 75 degrees, but is 15 on our unit circle? No, it's not. So I don't want to do 90 plus 75 degrees. What about 60? 60 is also right there beside 75. But if I do 60, I'd have 60 plus 15 degrees. Again, 15 degrees is not on the unit circle. So I cannot use 60 plus 15 either. Okay, so let's go to a bigger number. Let's try 120. Okay, how do I get back to 120? Or how do I get back to 75 from 120? We would have to subtract 45 degrees. Now that is what we're looking for because 120 degrees is on the unit circle as well as 45 degrees. So we're going to go back to our equation now and I'm going to rewrite cosine of 75 degrees 
equals the cosine of 120 minus 45. Okay, now I want to go back to those identities and I'm using the difference identity for cosine. So cosine of 120, uh, let's just say A and B. Let's just write our generic one here. So we have the cosine of A minus B is equal to, now remember with cosine, the trig identity, the trig formulas are in order. So we have cosine A, cosine B, but our sine is the same. So instead of a minus sign, or sine is different. So instead of a minus sign, we have a plus sign. And then sine of A, sine of B. So that is what we're going to use. Now we are going to say that 120 is equal to our A value and 45 is equal to our B value. So that's what we're going to plug in to this formula up here. So this is equal to cosine of A, which is 120, times the cosine of B, which is 45. Now notice that I'm not using that negative. That's very important, all right? That negative sign is not gonna go with my 45 plus, because my sign is different, sine of 120, cosine, uh, so, no, 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 sine of 45. All right, there we go. So, cosine 120, cosine 45, plus sine 120, sine 45. Now we can go back and go ahead and look at your unit circle and figure out what those are. So the cosine of 120 degrees is equal to negative one half. If you look on your unit circle, the cosine of 45 degrees is the square root of two over two, plus the sine of 120, which is going to be the square root of three over two, times the sine of 45, which is the square root of 2 over 2. All right, so now we're just going to multiply and add across. Negative 1 times the square root of 2 is negative square root of 2 over 2. Oh, oh, oh sorry, 2 times 2 is going to be 4. So multiply straight across. So square root, negative square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is going to be the square root of 6 over 4. And then I'm just going to rewrite that so that it's a little looks a little nicer and put together. So the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. Okay, and then that's our final answer for that example. All right, so we can also do the same thing in radians, actually. Don't think you have very many homework questions that are in radians, but let's go ahead and look at this one as well. Um, with the 12 down here, we know we're going to want to be looking at a couple of different angles that are in either in terms of 3 and 4, because those would have a common denominator of 12, or 2 and 6 would also probably, also could work. Ah, but let's go ahead and do with the 3 and the 4. Now, two of the ones with 3 and 4 as a denominator are just pi over 3 and pi over 4. Now, let's rewrite these so that they have a denominator of 12 and see if that there's an easy way to get pi over 12 with these two. So, let's multiply top and bottom here by 4 and multiply top and bottom here by 3. That's going to give us 4 pi over 12 and 3 pi over 12. Okay, so this one actually worked out pretty easy. 4 pi minus 3 pi over 12 is going to be equal to pi over 12. So 4 pi over 12 minus 3 pi over 12 equals pi over 12. So I can rewrite sine of pi over 12 as the sine of um, 
let's see, I don't have to use that. I'm going to go back to my original ones, so I don't have to use the common denominators. So I'm going to go back to what I had. So pi over 3 minus pi over 4. Okay, so I just went back to my original angle or angles that I had up there. Okay, now what do we do for sine? This is going to be our a value. This is going to be our b value. Remember the signs are the same for sine, but it's those trig identities that are messed up. So we have the sine of pi over 3 minus pi over 4 is going to equal, we start and end with sine, so we have sine of pi over 3 times cosine of pi over 4. Signs are the same, so we're going to use that minus. Cosine of pi over 3 sine of pi over 4. And remember, we do not want to keep that minus sign with the pi over 4. I know we've trained you guys through so many different ways to keep that minus with it, but not on this. Okay, so now we're going to go to our unit circle and figure out what sine of pi over 3 is. Sine of pi over 3 is the square root of two, 3 over 2. Cosine of pi over 4, square root of 2 over 2, minus the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half, and the sine of pi over 4, which is the square root of 2 over 2. So simplifying, multiplying all of that together, we are going to have the square root of 6 over 4 minus the square root of 2 over 4, which then simplifies to the square root of 6 minus the square root of 2 over 4. And you will notice that a lot of these answers do end up being very similar. All right, so that's our first two examples. Let's go ahead and... Uh, I don't know, let me see if I have enough time here to go on. I think I do. Okay, now moving on to example number two. Now, notice that we don't have just angles in there anymore, either in radians or degrees. Now we have a variable and an angle. But we can rewrite this in terms of sine and cosine. So just remember, x is going to be our a value, pi over 4 is going to be our b value, and let's go ahead and write that identity out again. So the sine of a minus b, now sine is the, has, for sine, the sine is the same, and it is those trig functions that are messed up. So we start and end with sine, so sine of a cosine b minus cosine a sine of b. And that's our identity, so let's go ahead and copy that out for this one. We want to rewrite sine of x minus pi over 4. So we're going to have sine of x cosine of pi over 4 minus cosine of x sine of pi over 4. All right, and then your sine of pi over rewrite. Let's go back here. So we have sine of x, cosine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of pi over 4 is the square root of 2 over 2. So that, let's make that look a little bit better. Square root of 2 over 2, sine x minus square root of 2 over 2, cosine x. And yeah, there's some different ways that you could write that out. You could factor out the square root of 2 over 2 if you want to, uh, but either way would be just fine to write it out. Okay, um, cosine, I think we've done enough examples of that one. Let's see, we've got one more example to do, but it's kind of our longest one, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here, and we'll pick up with that last example um, on the next video.